We know from research on the biology of stress that that negative impact of that during sensitive periods of time that's going to sculpt the architecture of the brain can have effects on learning behavior and physical and mental health. What this is allowing us to say is that these experiences that children uh, come, come across that we provide them with in those first three or four or five years provides the scaffolding. Doesn't guarantee a perfect life later on, but it, in a sense, is an insurance policy. Some experiences are more important early in life than later in life, and therefore it argues for investing in what happens in those first three to five years. So persistent stress changes brain architecture. Let me show you this. Um, we know that there are changes in the structure of the, of, the, of the nerve cell that's responsible for communication, for the ability of children to respond in, in their world. This is a typical neuron sitting in the, in the prefrontal cortex. Which This is a neuron that uh, uh, after it, uh, it uh, un undergoes chronic stress during development, this is the way it ends up. So toxic stress results in, in architectural changes of fewer connections. It's not only are they at risk for drug and alcohol dependence, um, but other aspects of their biology. They're at risk for depression. Maybe nobody's surprised by that. They're at risk for cardiovascular disease earlier. It's not as though the die is cast and you know the door slams shut, but it will say to us, if you want to get this kid back on a typical developmental trajectory, if you wait too late, it's going to be like pushing open a thousand pound door instead of just having it swing open very gently, which you can do with the right early experiences. The second is as we understand how experience affects the brain, we're in a better position to do two things. To identify as early in life as possible kids who are at risk for falling off a typical developmental trajectory. And the second is to develop interventions that target specific circuits in the brain. There's a critical period. There's a period of time during which this profound neglect that they've experienced, right, uh, requires an intervention and enrichment, um, and it has to happen within a certain period of time in order to, for it to have its most powerful effects. The most important ingredient in positive experiences for young children is the responsive adult or set of adults that are there in the child's life who are helping to let that brain be excited about learning and supporting that brain's development. In addition to uh, trying to focus on getting to the most at-risk populations as soon as possible, and that would be before birth, if I had to just focus on dealing with the situations after birth where you have an infant or you have a toddler, um, that developing uh, daycare systems where we um, are rank them in terms of their quality where we uh, provide the resources to encourage them to hire the very best staff. You can't do it on the cheap. That if we start with those systems and, and generate a, a, a systems of excellence early and apply those to the most at-risk uh, individuals, that's where we're going to get the biggest bang for the buck. And that if we then continue to be mindful of how experience writes on the brain, then we're much more likely to have children who wind up being successful, happy, productive citizens of society.